Civ 5 tips. Uh, these are my tips for playing the game Civilization 5. They're also going to work with Civ 4, 3, 2, 1, Civ 6, etc. Try to found your cities along rivers or the coast. Provides production values you can take advantage of later, such as the hydroelectric plant. Um, the harbor, building naval units, and certain wonders such as Colossus, I believe, in the lighthouse. Try to build wonders that give free tech, free buildings, or other free items instead of using production to research tech, buildings, etc. So if you build a wonder, it might say includes one free tech, includes one free building, adds a free monument in all of your cities. Build those wonders. And don't worry about building the lighthouse, for example, or the monument. Transportation, such as by water, rail, or air, is very important in the game. Being able to move across a map will allow you to have a smaller military. So if you have a good rail system, you can have a small military because you can move your army across the map easily. The same with paratroopers, aircraft, etc. Rare resources such as iron, oil, and uranium will determine who wins the game. If you control these resources, the enemy cannot win. Uh, so sometimes when I play, if uranium is available and the map is huge and there's only two players, no one's going to have acquired all the land. So you want to rush to get all those materials and if you get all the oil and all the uranium the enemy can't win same with the iron better to upgrade or research better units than to build many weaker units one strong unit can defend a large army of weak units can defeat a large army range weapons give a huge advantage this includes artillery archery airplanes etc try to settle your cities along a river along the coast You'll be able to get additional production from hydroelectric plants and other production bonuses. You get a defensive bonus from the river. Some vehicles might not be able to go on certain property also. When researching technology, try to research the tech that will be done in the fewest number of turns. Try to research tech that gives you something for free, such as an additional free tech. Try to research tech based on your gameplay strategy, which is either military production, culture, etc. Try to research tech that advances you towards oil, railroads, nuclear power, etc. Try to end your turns with your units on high ground, gives them better defense and a good view. Otherwise, stop in a forest or other defensive tile. Get rid of barbarian encampments. They help you upgrade your units because you earn skill. By, by defeating them, you may get something of value and it will protect your cities and workers as your city grows because you won't have barbarians respawning and going after and harassing your cities and your workers. Try to find ruins at the start of the game that can help you grow quickly. Keep your units close to your cities at the start of the game. Explore as much as possible in circles around your city. And the reason why you want to do circles is because your settlers have to find the closest place to settle. You don't want your scouts to go far away. You want them to settle. You want them to scout the immediate area. Avoid using the unit upgrades to heal. So you can upgrade a unit and it says, oh, it heal you instantly. You're probably never going to need that. Don't use it. Focus on strengthening your units. You might need them for a long time. It's fun to set production and workers manually. However, if you want to spend your time focusing on other aspects of the game, put your workers into automated mode. There's always going to be someone who says, I can do it better than the workers in automated mode. Fine. Engage in research packs or trading research or tech with other nations. You will benefit if there are three or more players in the game. So if you do a research pack, or if you trade research with other nations, you're going to benefit from it. That's what they do. They advance very quickly technologically because they're trading 
research. If you don't participate with that, they're going to be way ahead of you. Use your gold to buy tiles or build improvements such as buildings. I use my gold almost always to build improvements and sometimes to buy a tile. Watch your happiness, culture, and other values. If your happiness is low, production decreases. If your cultural influence is low, your city might join another nation. Avoid other nations at the start of the game. Make contact for trading, but keep away from their units. They can attack at any time, and they'll have an advantage. Try to adopt policies that give you something for free. It will give you a big advantage at the start of the game. Free settler, free worker, free tech, etc. See over here it says uh, free settler appears near the capital. Use your settlers as quickly as possible. They are weak and they can easily die or be captured. Don't have your settlers hanging around doing nothing. Get them busy doing something. Make them useful. The cities are very valuable. Do not produce too many workers. If they have nothing to do, you're going to have lots of workers not doing anything, depending on which version you're playing. If you don't, if you don't know what to do with military units, place them in your cities for defense, especially around the outskirts on the circumference. Fortifications, a type of improvement, are not very useful. Almost never use them. Your first cities will have the best production later in the game. The cities you build later in the game will have lower production. Use automated workers. You should probably build road and rails to connect your cities because the automated workers won't do a good job. The easiest wonders to build are coastal cities since there's fewer coastal cities. So the opponents won't be working on wonders in coastal cities. So that's where you got a little bit of an advantage. Make coastal cities, start working on the wonders in the coastal cities. The best, and you want to use wonders in coastal cities that are specific to coastal cities, such as the Colossus or Lighthouse. The best use of the gold is to buy buildings which improve production. Use overwhelming force whenever engaging in combat. Bombard first with ranged weapons and use close combat weapons. So the best use of the gold is to buy buildings that produce more gold. It's a no-brainer. You will eventually have every social policy, every tech. Research what is most relevant. Don't research social policies that benefit cities if you don't have many cities. Some tech trees will branch into something you never use. For example, you might not use sailing if you are primarily landlocked. You travel faster in your own territory. Avoid traveling outside your territory. Enemy nations usually travel more slowly in your territory. There might be units that are exceptions, like the, like the Native American scout might have a bonus when traveling. City-states have little impact in the game. They can have powerful military units, and they're only useful if you have a strong alliance. They will break a strong alliance if you offend them. So the city-states will switch allegiance very quickly. No matter how strong your reputation is, they'll drop you. Another nation builds a wonder before you do. You will not be able to complete it. It is harder to build wonders when there are many nations. Try to settle as many cities as quickly as you can while still producing workers to improve the tiles. One of the problems you're going to have, too many cities, not enough workers, and then the cities can't grow. You play on a huge map, it takes longer to play each turn. You will play many turns when nothing happens. An enemy nation may declare war on you, and if the map is too big, the war will end before you can move your military to the enemy territory. The general rule, after 20 turns, if there's no combat, the war ends. And I've had games where it took 20 turns to get across to the enemy territory, and the game ended. <laughs> the war ended. Naval units are not very useful. A good air force is better than a good navy. In the older versions, I, you could argue that naval units were good because you could stack, you could have a transport ship and put four tanks on it, 
and it would be great to go sink four tanks all at all in one turn and a naval unit but it doesn't work that way anymore so naval units are good but only to stop harassment of of your cities being bombarded from the shore and um there's an issue where your aircraft might get shot down by enemy naval units. But in general, I haven't had any problem with the more recent versions in terms of the Navy. Having airplanes means you can go and bomb everything, wherever it is. If you skip researching tech in the future, you'll be able to research it in fewer turns as your cities grow. You can research faster, so you can skip tags you don't want, research them later in fewer turns, instead of wasting many turns early in the game. So a tech might take 30 turns in the beginning of the game, but if you skip it, you might be able to do it in two or three turns later in the game. So you can skip a lot of techs. Building cities on coastal tiles allow you to build naval units. It's better to build on the coast than adjacent. Some naval units, such as aircraft carriers, can extend the range of your air force later in the game. If you got a choice, if you're near the coast, build on the coast. Don't take something a little bit inside. There is an issue because of the older versions. Maybe you didn't get as much production from the ocean tiles, but now it's pretty good. Some texts give you wonders to research along with free items such as a free social policy. Try to research these texts first to advance you faster in the game. This one gives you one free social policy. It's called the Oracle. It's over here. It's in this tech that goes across. And notice there's one, two, three, four, five things you get. This you only get two, this you get three. Try to go for the ones that give you something like a free social policy. Units such as a great artist or great general have little impact in the game. Use them to create a golden age to improve production if you have many cities. I'm constantly running golden ages with all of my great generals. Build wonders as soon as possible. Once the enemy builds it, you will not be able to and you lose the benefits. Defending is easier than attacking. If you think the enemy will attack, set up defensive positions. If you build the city on a thin isthmus, over here, the units can cross over from one side to the other. So a ship can enter the city and then leave over here, but it can't do it where these people are standing. Great scientists can be used to discover a free technology. Use it to research the tech that requires the most number of turns. Settling a lot of land allows you a better chance of controlling oil and uranium supplies. Unhappiness has a severe impact on your nation. Make as many coliseums, harbors, etc., to improve happiness. It seems like with Civ 5, it was a bigger problem than Civ 6. Sometimes you're going to have unhappiness constantly, and no matter what you try to do, you just won't be able to get rid of it. You'll have everything, and you just won't be able to get rid of it, and it severely impacts your game. You can set a city to produce research, which will allow you to research a new technology faster, which allows you to upgrade your military. A higher tech level military is better than a military unit with an XP bonus from being built in barracks. So it's better to build your military, go fight and upgrade it, than to get the XP bonus from a city that has a barracks. You can pillage tiles in enemy territory, which will weaken their production and might earn you gold. Better to keep military units alive than to reproduce them because the units with combat experience have more XP and skill than a newly produced unit. You don't want your units to die after you upgrade them. Keep them alive at all costs because if you have to produce a new one, you're starting over again. They'll be weaker usually better to destroy an enemy unit rather than weakening another. So if you got a choice between two enemy targets, 
you want to go for the weakest one that you can completely des destroy rather than weakening the stronger one. You can make the gameplay faster by removing animations and by disabling showing enemy player moves. Uh, it used to be that like if they would fight, you would see the guys do this little animation where they would fight each other. And the showing enemy moves could be kind of tedious and long. Workers cannot improve tiles that are new. Workers cannot improve tiles that are frozen or ice. Great scientists and similar units can. Use these units to build improvements on snow cover tiles. It's supposed to be snow, and it says no now. This is the city on the left. This over here is an improvement that's probably from a great scientist. And this one over here also. He cannot farm these, so I use the great scientist. That's not a great scientist. I use the great scientist to build something here, an improvement. You know, I hope you don't mind. I'm going to make a little change. Better to fully heal aircraft and other garrison units than risk losing them. If you lose them, you lose any upgrades or promotions. These are all the promotions, and you can get a few more. You don't want to lose all this. Some of them are like getting to attack twice. You don't want to give that up. It's like having two airplanes. Build cities on opposite coasts, which will extend the range of your aircraft. In the above photo, Megara should have been built on the east coast. You see Megara. This is my city's over here on the left. This should have been built on the opposite side because it would have extended my aircraft towards the opponent's territory by one additional tile. Damage units such as artillery can safely attack enemy units if it is garrisoned in the city. The city will protect the damage unit from return fire. The game can automatically adjust your focus. You can do it manually, and you can do it for every individual city based on your strategy. You want to do food and production or gold. Science, culture, and great person might not be so much. Depends on how you're doing. Best unit for scouting is a submarine. Travels it travels undetected. You can destroy enemy units such as workboats, and I think it can also go under the frozen areas. You can embargo enemy city production by placing submarines or other naval units in coastal waters. So you can block a city using submarines. So you might have an, an opponent go put some submarines near your city and you lose your production and you don't realize it. And you can do it to them too. It's a little trick you can use. Because if the naval unit is on a tile, they cannot get production from that tile and probably neighboring tiles either. Guess how he discovered that? I discovered it because there were enemy ships in my waters and it reduced the production and I saw it on the production map. Okay, so this is a city. The one is a number of aircraft. The artillery is garrisoned. The combat strength is 63. The population is 10. It will grow in 17 turns, uh, which means that it's about 27 turns. The name of the city and what it's producing, which is a hospital, which will be done in 16 turns. And it looks like it's done one or two turns already. This is the golden age. This is the numbers. He says 353 out of 2000. Before starting a golden age, Make sure your progress meter has a low value, like one out of a thousand. You don't want to do a high number because if it were like 2200 out of 2215, you're going to do a golden age anyway. 
when the golden age ends, it starts at the number where it left off. It doesn't reset to zero. If you think you might be defeated, do not give up. Play to win. You can still win if the enemy destroys most of your cities. Try to make a comeback. Don't get frustrated if you're losing. I used to give up, but then one day I started to keep on trying, even if I suffered major defeats like losing most of my cities. And I had games. I had a game where I only had enough resource to build one city, and I had absolutely nothing else. It was Age of Empires, and I came back and I won the game. I had another game where the enemy completely wiped me out, and all I had left was a nuclear submarine. And I went around, and I nuked its capital, and then I lost the game. But it was like I had nothing except for this one unit, and it was fun to do. When you have gold such as 400 plus, buy buildings. When happiness is below zero, buy buildings that produce happiness. Keeping happiness increases over production and gold income. So you want happiness over here, it's eight. This shows that these tiles are not being worked because they're black. The green one is being worked. You have lots of unworked tiles, focus on food production. Food production increases your population, creating more workers to work those tiles. This is an example. This boat is causing an embargo, so I cannot work on these tiles. Look how far away he is. Two tiles away. If you plan to build a lot of military units, try to build them in the same city. Make sure you have as many buildings that give XP bonuses to military units. This will ensure your units start out with an advantage. So designate one city to build military units. Put your barracks and all your training in that city and they will start out with an advantage. Don't build a barracks in every city. I know it's different in Civ 6. You can use a naval unit to spot distant naval vessels, land units, or cities as targets for your artillery and bombers. Try to destroy air defense first, otherwise they make it harder for you to do many bombing runs. This submarine is spotting these vehicles so my bombers can bomb them. Always try to attack from the furthest away. This is a submarine attack. It is better to produce buildings with an additive bonus, plus one or plus two when your city is new, and it's better to use rate increase plus 10% when your cities are larger. See how it says production plus 10%? Use that when you have a large city. And when it says production plus two, you use that when you have a small city. Because if production is one, plus two brings it up to three. But if production is one, plus 10%, it's still one. If production is 10, 10% will bring it up to 11. If production is, okay, if production is, tw if, is 30, plus 10% brings it up to 33. If it's 30 over here, it brings it up to 32. So you use the percentages for large cities, the additive for small cities. When you discover the whole map, your happiness will increase because you have discovered all the natural wonders. If you anticipate an incoming airstrike, use SAMs or naval vessels to defend against your aircraft. To defend against enemy aircraft, most naval vessels can defend your units along the coast, and SAMs can defend most land tiles. It looks like there's some sort of a assault going on over here. You might also... Be able to use jet fighters to do air defense in some version. Use a mobility promotion for land units that you want to use assault to assault enemy cities. It'll be easier if you have units that can travel many tiles so they can assault the enemy city without taking a turn vulnerable to enemy bombardment. See how it says movement plus one? You want to use that for the land units you're going to use when you assault an enemy city because you don't want them to be stuck in enemy territory where they get bombarded. You want them to be far away 
go in as far as possible, as deep as possible. Distant cities need culture to, to expand and to protect their borders. Cities near your capital are less dependent on culture. You really don't need the cultural buildings in your capital or near your capital. Far away, you have to build the cultural buildings, especially in the versions earlier than Civ 5, like Civ 3. Build more cultural buildings in your furthermore cities. Those are going to be things like museum, monument, temple. You only need about 10 bombers and two or three land units to win the game. Taking over each enemy city one at a time. You bomb it down to zero, you take two turns, and then you take a land unit to go in and clean it up. But slowly they're going to be weakening your land unit, so you're going to need like two or three. If you can't see a distant enemy city, you may need to send a navy ship to keep it visible. Okay, those are my tips. The other one is you got to choose between Civ 5 and C6. If you're a beginner video gamer, maybe you want to go for Civ 6, even though it's more money. I'm going to tell you Civ 5, a lot of people are going to argue is the better game. It's far more difficult and challenging. And uh, some of the features are really nice. Okay, so if you want to read more, go to cheapbooks.cc. Look for turn-based strategy in the video game section or search for Civ 6 or Civ 5. And if it is after August 13th, 2022, you might see more suggestions or tips published here. And eventually I'll put links to some videos. If you have any questions or comments, please post below.